طبعا في بداية الثورة كنا على شكل مجموعات صغيرة كنا نلتقي مع مع الناس العاديين في الشارع الفقراء من الناس تحديدا المضطهدين منهم والمعرضين دائما للسجن والقتل والتعذيب في سجون الاحتلال نعم كانت الاحتجاجات اولا في بعد بعد درعاء كانت احتجاجات سلميه تقتصر على المظاهرات في الشوارع لم يكن هنالك لا سلاح ولا قتل ولا شيء ولكن النظام كان يعامل هذه المظاهرات بكل وحشيه قتل العديد من الشباب فقط لانهم خرجوا مظاهره سلميه اي انا لم اكن اعرف اشتغل على البارود يعني ولكن Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. After months of work with Radio Free Syria, I was determined to do something tangible to help the Syrian people. On the 14th of August, I set off for Turkey from the UK. After a night in Norway and some days of travel across Turkey via bus, I was at the Syrian border by the 20th of August and crossed there with a friend and two others. One of the most surprising things about the border is how loosely guarded it is. The crossings along the Al Asi River have become a vital artery of the revolution. Refugees can cross to safety from there, food and arms can be smuggled across for the revolutionaries and for normal civilians, and aid can be brought in. One of the first things that you notice in Syria, apart from frequent poverty and ruins as a result of government bombing, is the fact that the Free Syrian Army has been very successful in ousting the government from most of this province. They have taken control of military hardware, which includes tanks, oh, artillery problems. and shilkas in the process, and have pushed Assad's army back across the province. One thing which really illustrates the fact that the uprising in Syria is an uprising of all Syrians is the fact that many of the fighters are so young, zealous, idealistic young men, eager to free their nation in spite of the risk to their own lives. I went up into the rocky outcrop with my friends above the Bashir region to see how the Free Syrian Army had defended themselves in this location. This region, look at this, is Bashir region. Bashir region. And that, uh, look, From these positions, the Free Syrian Army wreaked havoc on Assad's military convoys that were trying to storm the area and bomb and terrorize it into submission. In this position, uh, the uh, Free Army was here to fighting. Uh, look here at this road. There was here. The tank was uh, of gangs of Bashar from this road walking. They, they, they fire on the tank and from, from this here. Road, uh, the free army was uh, defend uh, himself from it. The, the resourcefulness and intuition of the locals is evident when exploring the positions they constructed to attack the army and evade bombing. However, there is no similar protection for civilian buildings against the artillery and jet fighters of Assad's army, which still reigns supreme. While I was near Darkush, Assad's forces arbitrarily bombed the town, sending plumes of smoke into the air, causing damage and possibly an unknown number of casualties. This is one such example of damage previously caused to the town, a bombing of a civilian building, a clear war crime. In a nearby refugee settlement, the effects of such arbitrary bombings and shellings become all too clear. When you look at these children and families and see the level of poverty and desperation they have been driven to, forced to come to this insanitary area and live in tents to escape certain death, you wonder how anyone could possibly hurt them when you look at them. Even more disheartening is the thought that these people were previously successful. They had homes to go home to, friends and families who loved them, and now many of them have neither. The optimism and cheer they show is incredibly heartening in spite of all this tragedy. However, many here are not so high-spirited, and understandably so. 
السلام عليكم كيف حالك؟ قولي لي على بس عليك هو ليش عليك يا وان؟ ليش تقولي انا حرني فقيره فانت لا يتيم لا ام ولا اب ولا اخ ولا حد يبني غير ولا ام ولا اخ برادر نو هاف جيست وابنك ما قتلوش صن مين قتلو؟ الجيش الاسود الجيش؟ لا قتلوا في الماما لا اقول لك اني انا شهيدة مين طفى شكله هون جيش الاسد؟ شو؟ جيش الاسد طفى شكله هون؟ لا لك مين طفى شكله مين؟ طفى شكله هون؟ الله يرضى عليك وابني عنده 14 سنة بس كمان هي سنة 14 سنة ما عندنا شيء دشرنا اغراضنا غفط بيوتنا علينا وضلنا جايين اذا بمك بدي اغير 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 بدي As well as living in insanitary conditions, people here are often forced to eat and work in them, cooking out in the open over primitive fires and stoves, causing all manner of health problems. محل ما كان يقصفك شفت التلة؟ الظهر هذا هذا من هنا شات قراجمة دبابة رشاشات منصوبة على السطح ايوه هذا بيتي طبعا حاليا مدمر بين بين الطريقين؟ بالضبط كم طابق؟ طابق واحد حجر دار كبيرة However, the resourcefulness of the people once again shows through. This woman is baking bread for her family, and this will feed many people, in spite of the harsh conditions. But in spite of this, proper sanitation is often impossible. This family in the next house has an open toilet next to their kitchen where food is prepared, running a high risk of health problems. When you see people living in these conditions, people that could be your families, people that could be your friends, or even someone you know, it is really disillusioning to think that the world is not helping these people at all. <laughs> No, no good. In spite of all this hardship, these people are very hospitable, even offering us tea and bread, despite having very little themselves, no electricity, and living in insanitary conditions. This is an incredibly touching trait, which I have seen across all the areas I have travelled in. One thing they were keen for me to see, however, was the Shahada, the Muslim Declaration of Faith. When these people have been so let down by the world, who can blame them for turning to God for solace? They certainly aren't going to get any help from the so-called friends of Syria. However, there was also time for amusement. After a jovial, energy drink fueled trip, we met another family who thankfully can still inhabit their own house. However, like many other people in this part of Syria, they are also very poor. They too have to live a very stoic existence, living off their animals and what little resources they may have. When medical care is available, it often isn't enough. <laughs> ما خلي الدكتور وجعي بظهر Back problems
and uh, natural uh, are not uh, good because poor and uh, very difficult. Difficult to li to live, yes. To life, in, uh, life is hard. Life is hard. Yes. However, optimism still prevails. I will kill uh, everyone in Sabiha and Bashar al-Assad. Inshallah. And I will kill uh, Hassan Nasrallah. Goodbye, Bashar al-Assad. Goodbye, Bashar al-Assad. Yes, I fight Iran. And Russia. Russia. And Iran. everyone with Bashar al-Assad. Fantastic. Okay. Shai. Mm. Mean, uh, in Arabic, Shai. Shai, Shai, Shai Jade. Shai Jade. Shai Jade. Shai Jade. One of the amazing things about the Syrian people is that despite their immense tragedy, they're always ready to show solidarity with each other and to help each other. I went to one of the local hospitals to see exactly what the problem was, and it soon became very clear. There are a large number of patients, but the medical staff here simply don't have the means to treat them all. This book records all the patients that have been treated, day by day. Today is five. Five. Uh, five patients. They are civil civilian and this, or? And this yeah. mount. About 10. 25, 30 in a day. Yes, uh, they suffer from bombing, from illness. All uh, illness. Illness. In this house, 300, 300, 300, 300 patients. At first, this may seem impressive, especially when you consider the monthly patient count and this new equipment here and the potential it has to help victims. Unfortunately, there is just one fundamental flaw here. This, like many moments of my time within Syria, was one that really made me feel disheartened. Even at a hospital such as this one, where there was even new medical equipment, the single doctor leaving the hospital was enough to greatly hinder it. No wonder so many people are unable to be properly treated. For many, whether it exists or not, help is simply unobtainable. These refugees from the Bishamur region are in an even worse state than many others. They are reduced to living under trees and getting donations from local organisations, such as my friend Abu Sales, to survive. And there are many people who live, who live like who live like this. Around. There is a lot of people like uh, like uh, the, uh, this region. Uh, also, there is a, a more more miserable way like the uh, like here. There is people uh, don't have anything. I think that here, uh, look uh, at them. There is nothing at all. There is only some, some I think, uh, uh, very, very small and very simple to children. Children need something to strong their body, to strong their uh, bodies, uh, to go, to grow more and more. But I think if they still, uh, and uh, if they still like that, uh, they will die soon uh, in uh, some oh, no. day or some month. So there's no proper nutrition, not much food. There is food. food uh, the food is very little. Uh, come from the association and organization, but till now it's very, very, uh, very uh, simple, uh, simple uh, uh, helpings or needs. When I asked my friend how many families were living here in this one area alone, I didn't expect the answer to be so many, even for Syria. There is about here. Uh, uh, Nine family, uh, yani the, the number of them here under trees is about uh, 50, uh, 51. Yes. Nine whole families are forced to, yes, yes. to live here. As my friend strongly reiterated, it is urgent that these people receive help before it's too late. Children need milk, children need something that uh, strong, uh, as I said to you, uh, strong, uh, strong uh, their bodies. And uh, they need, uh, uh, they need uh, the main necessary to live only. But I think, uh, uh, as I said to you uh, from uh, a little that if they still uh, like that, uh, the situation will be more worse, more worse after the... Uh, at the end, I think uh, uh, 
they will be a very miserable thing as the death of the children and like that. Makeshift rebel checkpoints such as these are responsible for maintaining peace in the region and assisting in local security and law enforcement, which is especially important given the number of smugglers and kidnappers in the area who often target locals and western journalists. These checkpoints are manned by dedicated rebel fighters and ensure that none of Assad's forces infiltrate the area to harm civilians. But what of the men who are fighting and giving their lives for the cause of Syria's freedom? I spoke to a man who is responsible for many of the revolutionaries constantly fighting on the front line and maintaining the peace as best they can. العربي السوري وكان هدفنا هو خدمة الشعب والوطن ولكن عندما رأينا عصابات الأسد ونظامه يقوم بقتل المدنيين العزل فاخترنا الطريق الصحيح وهو الانشقاق عن هذه العصابات والانضمام إلى الجيش السوري الحر وهو الذي يعني وهو الذي يمثل مصلحة السوريين ويهدف إلى حمايتهم من العصابات الإجرامية ونحن إن شاء الله سننتصر وسنحصل على الحرية التي يطلبها الشعب ونكون دولة جديدة تحمي جميع المواطنين no. uh, When did you start uh, لواء الجبل الوستاني when you وعندما عندما شقيت عن عصابات الاسد جئت الى هذه المنطقه منطقه الجبل الوسطاني وبدات بتنظيم المسلحين الجيدين الذين يريدون الحريه لشعبهم السوري وعندها كوننا ما يسمى لواء أحرار الجبل الوسطاني وهو مؤلف من عشر كتائب تعمل وتقاتل ضد عصابات الأسد وتحت سقف راية الشعب. Driving around Berisha, Darkush, and the areas surrounding the Alasi River on the border with Turkey, otherwise known as the Revolution River, the effect of the local resistance again becomes clear. Rebel fighters have pushed the government out of every location along the border with Turkey and the situation on the ground is peaceful and well organized, aside from the artillery fire and airstrikes by Assad's forces, which unfortunately continue to target innocent civilians. So how was this area liberated? In Jabal al-Wustani, there were about 16 hajiz. The first one was hajiz al-Dhahar. When we hit it, منذ عام واستطعنا أن نحصل عليه على عشر دبابات ومدافع وآليات كثر وأسلحة وذخائر ثم بعدها استطعنا تحرير مدينة دركوش والجبل الوسطاني وزال الروج والآن هي مستقرة كما ترى Having stayed with the resistance in Syria for over a week it is abundantly clear as it should be to anyone that these men are not the terrorists that some vilify them as, but are simply normal people trying to protect their families, their friends, and their nation. <laughs> but what of the opinions of his fighters on the revolution? Apart from Yassin, a Free Syrian Army fighter shown at the beginning of the film, I also spoke to some other men engaged in the fight for Syria's revolution. <laughs> والاضطهاد والقبضة الأمنية قاموا فيها أطفال نعم children أطفال children قاموا أول ما قاموا الأطفال في درعا اعتقلوهم وقلعوا وظافيرهم نعم فتطورت امتدت على جميع أنحاء سوريا صار في اعتقال وصار في قتل وصار في 
قوات النظام سلب ونهب للبيوت للمنازل للاعراض فكانت الثوره من زمان قامت من سنه 1984 او 1980 قامت ثوره ولكن قمعوها فرجعت تجددت الثوره في اذار عام 2000 و... 2010 نعم فتطورت بسوريا وقامت هالثوره فعزز النظام من قواته العسكريه دخل الجيش على المدن دخل صار يقمع صار يقتل قام الشعب الشعب قام لانه كان مضطهد وقام ضد الحريه يعني حريته ما في حريه للناس ما في حريه التعبير حريه الكلام حريه الدين اهم شيء فقام الشعب بثوره Contrary to the myth that they are armed by the US, you will always get the same answer if you ask any fighter if they receive foreign assistance from abroad. Yes, they speak with their mouth, but doing no. No action. Nothing action on the earth, no. Yes. Have the Arab Arab nations given any assistance either, or have they just all been talking and not acting? لتل فقط مساعدات إنسانية بسيطة كغذاء ولكن لم يقدموا لنا أي نوع من أنواع السلاح أو ال. Yes, they give to them only humanity assistance only, not weapons at all. Yes, if you had the right weapons, the Concorde missile, the anti-aircraft weapons, do you think it would take it would be much easier to bring the regime down and and much quicker? طبعا سنحقق بإذن الله انتصارات على الأرض. Yes, if they have a concourse missile, this is what they need. He speak about. This is what they need. If they need, they will liberate Syria from about two months or no more than. If the necessary weapons are not do not come through, or if nobody helps the free army, could it take a long time before Assad is is brought down? أمسك يعني هل إذا لم تمتلك هذه الأسلحة هل سوف تطول مدة سوف تتأخرون في عملية النصر؟ يعني إيش قدكم تقريبا يعني ولا هو طبعا اذا لم نحصل على السلاح المضاد للدراع من صواريخ كونكورس سوف يطول عمليه تحرير النقاط العسكريه التابعه للنظام لاننا يعني وقت طويل and the forces of Bashar have many, many more weapons in comparison to the forces of the revolution. Yes, of course, yes. Yes, of course. Would you say there is any substantial support left for Assad among some of the people, or is it mainly from Hezbollah, Alawite, Shia? Yes, of course. الحرب اليوم هي حرب إيران وروسيا والصين قبل نظام الأسد ونحن لم لو لم يكن يساعد نظام الأسد لكنا دحرناه منذ وقت طويل. Yes, the battle he talk about not with if this battle with Bashar and his gangs the liberation was from far away. But today he spoke about that their war with Hezbollah and with Iran gangs and like that. Yes. Do you think if the Western and the Arab countries intervened in a similar way to help the revolutionary side, that victory would be assured and much swifter? The danger to these innocent people is much closer than many would think a mere few miles down the road. These villages in the distance, such as Nahal and Mohanbil, are all under the control of Assad's army. From here, the troops arbitrarily fling shells, missiles and mortars into civilian settlements, 
trying to kill as many innocent people as possible. Although the camera cannot show them from this distance, there are some tanks parked nearby, and Assad's troops and Shabiha militants occupy most of the buildings, using them as cover for their bombing campaigns, abductions, sectarian murders, and repression of any local dissent. As usual, poverty is always close by, with residents of these small villages reduced to unhygienic, open-air methods of cooking and washing in order to survive. As my last evening came in Syria, I felt regret at having to leave so soon. Around a week seems much shorter with the fast-paced revolution taking you along a breathtaking journey with it. However, even in this darkness, we are not totally safe. Syrian Air Force jets and helicopters often fly overhead and bomb passing cars, regardless of if they contain civilians or not. Even headlights could be a giveaway. Yet I constantly felt a sense of calm, no matter where I was in Syria. Was I naive? Maybe. But Syria still retains a wonderful serenity in spite of all the tragedy. The next day was a beautiful day, as I left Syria on the morning of the 29th of August, with plenty of things to think about. I felt traumatised by many things I saw in a week. I cannot begin to imagine how Syrians must have coped for three years. Yet they still refused to bow. If any nation has more than earned freedom, it has to be Syria. To fight half the world, for three years, with few friends on the outside and few resources, is something quite incredible.